Hello operators, Oscar Hotel 8, Sierra Tango November here from Survival Tech Nord. Today we're talking about portable solar panels from Power Film Solar. Now, if you've been around the channel for a while, you already know that I've been using Power Film panels for quite some time. So let's take a look at where I started with Power Film Solar, where I ended up, and what I've just added to my collection of Power Film panels. All right, stick with me. And let's get started. You are listening to the emergency broadcast systems. This station broadcasts emergency news and official information on the air for a sign area. For those of you who have been around the channel for a while, you've seen me using a variety of solar panels. In recent years, I have settled on the Power Film Solar solar panels. My first panel from Power Film was the FM161200, that's a 20 watt thin film folding panel. Since I was primarily operating QRP portable at the time, it was perfect for the Yaesu FT817 and a small DIY battery pack. Now later on I started to design this concept of a solar powered field station. That's a ham radio field station with shelter, with uh, portable power and enough batteries to last uh, 24 hours of operating. Naturally, we needed solar panels to keep those batteries charged. That's when I went ahead and invested in the second panel from Power Film, the FM167200. The FM167200 is an absolute monster solar panel. Like its little sister or brother, the FM161200, it's a folding thin film panel. The difference is it puts out 120 watts or about 7.2 amps of power in full sunlight. In fact, it was the Powerfilm FM167200 powering the X Days Off Grid Expedition during the summer of 2018. So that panel, along with a 10 amp hour DIY lithium iron phosphate battery pack, kept my communications and camp up and running for three complete days in the field. The FM series of solar panels from Powerfilm are all lightweight and backpack portable. In fact, the only way I would be able to have a man portable fuel station with this amount of capability, powering my radio equipment, my field computer, and any sensors I might have with me, is by using this man portable series of solar panels from Powerfilm. Now, it's probably ridiculous to have to point this out, but the power film panels are already pretty robust. Now, if you're operating man portable as often as I am out in the field at 65 degrees north, your gear is going to get beat up. So it absolutely needs to be reliable. It gets thrown down, it gets frozen, it gets covered in sand and soot and sometimes drenched in torrential downpours. Now, honestly, I've already gone through the cheap Chinese lookalike panels from eBay, from Alibaba, and sure, they might look like a good deal until you start buying them over and over and over again because they fail. So from that perspective, the folding series from Powerfilm has been an excellent investment. So not only do they provide the power that I need, they provide that power in a man portable package which I imagine is going to last me a lifetime. Anyway, so far, so good. If something changes or if they fail, I'll definitely be the first one to tell you. Now, what about solar panels for extreme weather scenarios? Solar panels which can take more abuse or even be submerged in a torrential downpour for days or weeks at a time. What would that solar panel look like? Well, it would look like the R series from Power Film Solar. The R series stands for rollable, but let's not get these confused with the rollable lightsaver series. As I mentioned earlier, last year I was in Lapland during the X Days Off Grid series. I ran out of power on the morning of the third day. Now I don't recall if I ever mentioned why I ran out of power, but it was because of the rain. Rather than leaving my solar panels out in the rain to get waterlogged, I pulled them back inside the teepee tent during heavy rainfall. Now I know that seems like overkill, but I wanted to bring them inside the shelter 
to protect them from the elements, even though they were still capable of producing power. This brings us to the first real difference between the R series and the folding series. The R series is completely waterproof and submersible, so there's no worry of getting waterlogged or leaving them outside the teepee tent when I'm deployed in extreme weather. Of course, the folding series is no stranger to bad weather, but we need to dry them off and dry them out before we store them long term. In contrast, the rollable series is impervious to water ingress. What this means is the rollable series doesn't require any maintenance after getting wet, it requires no maintenance after being submerged, and requires no special handling for long-term storage. I don't think one panel is better than the other, but I do think Powerfilm Solar has given us the opportunity to select the right tool for the job. With a folding series of panels, I have the portability and weight savings required for MAM portable deployments. The rollable series allows us to power our communications and electronics gear in whatever extreme weather conditions Mother Nature throws at us. And other than cleaning, no special care or handling is required before packing up or long-term storage. Now we're all trying to achieve unique things with off-grid portable solar power. So whatever adventure you're trying to power, I'm certain Powerfilm Solar is going to help you achieve your goals. For me, that's powering communications and electronics during radio expeditions, powering my gear when I'm visiting the off-grid cabin, or establishing emergency communications during a grid-down scenario or blackout. Whatever activity I'm doing, I use my power film panels like a combination of a box of Legos and a multi-tool. Let's take a moment to look at some of the differences between the rollable series and the folding series. I think we can say the main differences between these panels are how they're constructed, the encapsulation, their portability, and their ruggedness in wet weather environments. If you look at the folding panel in the center of the image, you can see that it's made up of multiple solar modules. Each module is connected internally with a certain amount of space between them. This grid-like spacing provides a necessary room for the modules to be folded once they're attached to the canvas backing. The backing material provides the strength for the solar modules to adhere to, and also provides the flexibility to fold the panel. When we look at the rollable series panel, we can see that it's one continuous solar module. The solar modules in the rollable series are totally encapsulated. This adds an IP67 ingress protection level to the solar module, although I suspect it's actually more. This encapsulation process is what provides the rollable series protection against water ingress and the IP67 rating. And just like the FM series, the modules are redundant, so even if one is damaged, the others will continue to function and provide power. In this shot, we can really see the breakdown size or the stored state of the rollable and foldable panels. The FM series stores flat, while the R series rolls up into a tube. So of course the folding series being flat is easier to pack in a backpack. But don't be put off by the tube nature of the rollable series, since the space inside the tube can be used as additional storage space. Now, I've been using the FM series or the folding series for a couple of years now. I think it's safe to say I've had extremely good luck with them, powering my equipment in the field. In fact, I'd have to say these lightweight, portable, and very versatile panels are the primary enabler allowing me to stay out in the field man-portable for extended periods of time. I totally understand how some people don't get that. But as drastic as the change was switching from lead-acid batteries to lithium batteries to save weight, switching from traditional solar panels to power foam solar panels was also an extreme enabler. 
So if you're anything like me, restricted by weight and carrying capacity, you will inevitably arrive at power film solar panels to power your adventures. So enough about the FM series. I think we're all on the same page. So at the time of making this video, I've had the rollable series for just about two months. So at the moment, I have two R28s and one R21. Those are 28 watt and 21 watt panels. The R21 or the 21 watt panel is used on my hiking trailer to keep my portable power topped up while I'm on the trail. The two R28 panels, as you see in the video, are used very much in the same way I use the FM series. The only difference is I'll leave them there deployed regardless of the weather conditions. Up here at 65 degrees north, we have a wide variety of weather. It's possible to achieve minus 30 or minus 40 in the winter, but it's also possible to get hit by an autumn storm approaching the levels of a light hurricane. We also get everything in between those extremes. And for this reason, we thought it was important to add the rollable series to our gear loadout. You see, had I had the rollable series during the 2018 Lapland expedition, I would never have run out of power because I simply would have left them out there producing power as long as they could. It's actually a very simple equation. The longer my panels are deployed in producing power, the fewer the amount of kilos or pounds I need to carry in terms of battery capacity. So if my panels can stay out longer producing energy, the longer I can power my station and station equipment with fewer batteries to carry. Now I've shown you scenes from this clip quite a few times during this video. And the reason for that is it was the first overnight I spent using the Powerfilm R28 rollable panels. I used these panels to power my radio station with a lithium iron phosphate battery pack I built myself on the channel for the 2018 expedition to Lapland. Now I am using several different battery packs with the Powerfilm panels, but they're all lithium iron phosphate battery packs and they're all using Genesan charge controllers for lithium batteries. This combination of components, the solar panels, the charge controller, and the batteries are all important choices because they all contribute to an efficient solar power system. As we continue documenting the adventure with Powerfilm Solar and our solar power systems in the field, I'll also publish a few posts on getting the most out of your battery packs, your charge controllers, and how they relate to your Powerfilm Solar solar panels. So, I think I'm going to leave you some links in the descriptions for videos I've done already where I've used the Powerfilm panels. I'll also link to the specification sheets published with each of the Powerfilm panels. I'll leave links to blog posts that I've made over the years about the Powerfilm panels. And of course, I'll leave you with some links in the description for where to buy. Feedback or questions, please leave them in the comments. And if you're already a Powerfilm solar, solar panel user, let us know in the comments how you're using your Powerfilm panels. And there we have it, guys. Powerfilm Solar. If you're supporting this channel through Patreon, PayPal, or simply sharing my content, you're absolutely magnificent and I couldn't do it without you. For the rest of you, if you like what I'm doing, if you like the content I'm creating, leave me a comment and a thumbs up to let me know. And if it's not too much to ask, please share this video with someone or someplace where other operators might enjoy it. Rock and roll, guys. Thanks for watching.